All right, welcome pen friends. This is Tom with Gold Spot Pens, and it's been a while since we did one of these, but boy, do we have a doozy for you today. We have brand new pens from our friends in Italy, uh, Leonardo Officina Italiana. We have a two-for-one unboxing. We have Momento Zero, limited edition celluloid, and we have the Furore, uh, which is a regular edition, as a steel nib and we're going to take a look at both of these guys um, this one is actually one that i'm picking up for myself so you can't have it um, so that may add a little bit more uh, flavor or intrigue to this if you'd like but um, this is one i picked up for myself and it comes in a very nice larger size kind of gift box and this is the ones that they do uh, like i said for limited editions and um, and we'll get to this guy of course by the way momentarily but we'll open this one here first so this is the memento zero collection it's got this little pamphlet in here and of course you could go through it and it's got the various styles that this particular pen model comes in along with some beautiful photography that shows it off quite nicely then we have a genuine leather pen sleeve with the leonardo logo that's on here which feels very soft i don't know if you could really tell by uh, the texture of the lighting and everything but this just has such a nice smooth soft and it smells great too it's like that nice leather that has a beautiful genuine leather aroma to it then we have a little packet which says 100 percent italian it's a 14 karat gold nib it's like a certificate of authenticity here and then on the back here it kind of looks like you've got blue dental floss but um, this is actually the uh, expended shavings that came from the solid rod of celluloid that was used to make the pen which is pretty cool it's it's a nice little uh, nerdy sort of pen thing that I appreciate a little touch of handmade uh, coolness that uh, comes along with this pen and something to definitely keep along with everything else in the box here too so and we have a bottle of ink, which is a beautiful matching turquoise ink. And this is 40 milliliters, so it's a nice, was this a uh, hexagonal side in or octagonal? But it's a nice uh, bottle of ink that's here. And of course the pen, oh my gosh, the pen. Made from turquoise celluloid that I drool over every single time I go look at Leonardo's Instagram feed. I've been doing so for at least about a year. And finally, as we were able to get this brand here in gold, at Gold Spot Pens, and now the Grail pen is mine, as they say. So it, uh, it the, the celluloid is just, it just, it's remarkable to see the level and depth of brilliance and chatoyance and uh, the luster that just comes out of this beautiful blue that they made. And it's very similar, to, if not the same, to a lot of other uh, turquoise celluloids that let's say Delta or Monte Grappa has used in the past, but usually you don't see them very often. They're very usually, uh, they're usually a, a limited edition or a very expensive pen model. This comparatively, yes, is expensive, but um, granted, may be not as much as, let's say, uh, like a Monte Grappa pen of this sort of stature. So um, it has a 14 karat gold nib. And this one here I have in the stub as a Leonardo brand that's on here. Has a beautiful looking S curve ebonite feed. And it's a very wet writer, as we'll show in the uh, writing sample soon. The, uh, the pen is a piston filler, and it's limited to 100 pieces, and this is number 86. And I actually saw that we have uh, 98 as well in stock. So we have a 98, and I'm like, oh man, we've probably got in at the very end of this edition. So there's probably not too many left of these guys. Um, it is a piston filler. I don't know if I just mentioned that or not. Um, so there is a piston, this blind cap here, you would extend it to push down the piston all the way to the front, and then you would screw it back in to draw up the ink. The um, grip section here is, is kind of a unique sort of um, bulb 
uh, kind of design that steps down. It's quite comfortable, um, especially considering that the uh, barrel threads really are are very subtle that are here. They don't really offer too much, uh, you know, in the way of, of distraction of being able to hold the pen. And then also here, the lip from the section to the rest of the barrel really isn't that um, deep of a step. So it really is very comfortable to hold on to, even though it doesn't flare out towards the end. The cap has uh, three decorative bands in here, and this is all in rhodium trim. The clip has a wheel at the end to make it a little bit easier to slide in and out of your pocket. There's no adornment on the ends of the pen here, um, but one can feel like it suggests maybe an Omas-like design overall, kind of like an Arte Italiana, but without the faceted uh, sides. So uh, very reminiscent of that and and also some of the pens that Delta used to make as well. Which actually, to bring it uh, about a point, is that this brand had been started by uh, a father and son duo. The father was one of the, the chief pen makers at Delta and is passing down all of this 40 plus years of knowledge down to his son, Salvatore. And uh, they're making some uh, just flat out amazing pens that just look great in pictures and even better in person. So um, that it, we're just unboxing and just taking a look at this limited edition, but we'll also unbox another beautiful pen that is of at a more approachable price range in the Furore. And this is the Emerald Furore. And we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between each one of them because these are examples of each of their models. So the Furore has a decorative outer box sleeve, a reminiscent of some stained glass uh, art artwork sort of thing. We have a black Leonardo uh, inner sleeve that opens up to a box, and we open up the box here. And so the Furore collection comes with its own booklet that also has like a you know, pictorial, a pictorial guide to all the different styles and the inspirations that come for each of the resins that are made. And just these resins are just so, so beautiful. So beautiful. And most of these designs um, that you will see either come in the rhodium silver or in the gold accents to the trim and the clip and also the nib too. So the nib, instead of being uh, stainless steel, it would be gold plated stainless steel. So we got that there. And so not too much in comparison to what comes with the limited edition, but hey, with limited editions, you would kind of expect along with the price point that you would get a little something extra. So uh, this is a standard edition and this has a stainless steel nib. And this is, like I said, was the Emerald Furore. It is cigar shaped. And just look at that resin. Oh man, that's such a nice looking resin. It's very unique too, because you don't really see, I mean, you've seen other types of resins that, you know, have like a lustrous sort of chatoyance, but this also has kind of that aqua sort of, you know, it almost looks like as if you're looking at the waters and, and at a grotto. Uh, it just It just has such a beautiful like depth and uh, just brilliance to it that, it, it just it looks great also with the gold trim like we were looking at here with the uh, rhodium silver trim but this uh, this furore looks beautiful with the gold um, as well as a silver too and which which is something that we offer um, these are also numbered but they are not limited so if you notice that this is number uh, 959 however there is no slash and then ending number they just keep going up in number so you have your own pen would have its own number but it's not of a limited amount. Uh, we are going to sell all the, the Memento Zero models. We actually have them up on the website. Uh, not all of the styles, but we have some of them. Uh, we have mostly the blue ones right now at the moment, but we will expand out to the other ones, uh, you know, pending to see like how this initial launch goes. So with the, Zero, with the Memento Zero or the Fiore, it has a removable blind cap that's at the end here to activate the converter that's inside. So it's not a it's not a piston fill, but you can kind of treat it like a piston fill if you don't want to open up the section, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's a little neat little added bonus to this. So we're gonna open up and just take a look at it here anyway. It's a beautiful looking converter. It has Leonardo's brand and print on here. And see, 
This is the same exact thing that I was doing with the rest of the barrel on and removing the blind cap, but I'm just doing it like you would operating a normal converter. So there's that kind of little added little feature to this. Stainless steel nib available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and also a stub as well. And we're going to just take a look at both of these guys side by side here. This gives you a direct comparison. Very similar in size, with the main exception being the design itself is a little bit more pointy in the Fiore, and a little bit more tapered. And I'm just taking a look at, I mean, just even though this is resin and this is celluloid, this resin just has such a beautiful brilliance to it that it almost looks like celluloid. And the Fiore, if you can notice here, instead of having the three bands, has the two bands that are here, still has a band down here, and then a band from where the barrel meets with the section. Has a very similar, if not the same, type of section as the Momento Zero where it has the threads in the same spot, the tapering is in the same location, you know, same type of nib, although you see with the limited edition, it's got the ebonite feed on it, so it's a very different feed that's on there. Size-wise, uh, we're looking at for the Momento Zero. I did not get, actually, the, the measurements are on the website for both of these, but um, I did more detailed measurements for the Momento Zero. Uh, the uh, pen length capped is 142 millimeters. The pen length opened is 127. The pen length posted is 163 and a half. The body diameter at this point here, at the where the, the barrel ring is over here, is uh, 14 millimeters. And then the section diameter where it kind of tapers down into this little section right here, that's 10 millimeters. And then the weight with ink is 0.9 ounces, which is 25.5 grams, which actually, you know, for a pen that looks like it's lighter, this is actually a pretty decently weighted pen. You know, for a celluloid pen, it doesn't feel like it's too light in hand, yet it doesn't feel hefty either, of course. 25 and a half grams is not, you know, heavyweight, but yet it's not a lightweight either. So it, it really does kind of give itself a bit more of that um, substantial feeling with a little bit more heft in there. So um, this, like I was saying before, this is the celluloid limited edition model. Uh, this model is going to be, um, is, is actually listed on the website right now. We have the fine and medium. This is my stub, so don't touch it. It's mine. Um, it's $789 is the listed price for it on goldspot.com, which if you look for it anywhere else, as far as like euros, or we just translate the price, price from euros. So it's not like if you go get this um, overseas, it's not going to be significantly cheaper, um, not like, let's say, going and shopping for Pelicans or anything else. Like, it's going to be the same uh, price just translated into U.S. dollars. The Furore and the uh, Momento Zero, that's not the Celluloid Limited Edition, are priced at $199, uh, uh, sale price, retail price. And, uh, and they feature the stainless steel nib and these gorgeous acrylic resins, of course. So... Uh, let's see, we're just, I'm just catching up with my notes here. So we could do a writing sample because I have the limited edition here inked. Let's arrange things here. So I inked it with the turquoise that came with the pen which is a beautiful looking tur turquoise. Let's get some closer up here. All right. So I'm not gonna be looking into the, uh, the screen as much, so I won't be able to catch your questions. Well, I'll try to peek back every once in a while just to make sure I'm in frame here, but I'm just gonna do a bit of a writing sample here.
And if you kind of see, like, you notice that it's, a, it's doing a little bit of a hard start. And this is something that I kind of called some attention to yesterday when I had opened up and checked out the pen to start with. It feels, it feels as though the issue could just be a case of baby's bottom, um, which is like an over-polishing of the nib tines, especially since this is an, a stub nib, that um, they could be somewhat prone to that sort of issue. Uh, so, you know, I, I know it's like one of those things where a lot of times, you know, people will say it's like, oh, well, it's such an expensive pen. You know, how could you how could you give a nib that doesn't like automatically, you know, start up right away? But I mean, like once you start getting it going and you get it writing, it's very juicy and wet. But however, it just sometimes has that little bit of a of a hitch on there. And that's something that I feel is 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 probably going to end up working itself out without me having to tool around with it. However, a little bit of some micro mesh um, will probably just get the get the whole issue just kind of resolved in a much quicker, uh, you know, time expanse than, ha you know, kind of waiting for it to kind of settle in and, and kind of break itself in. But this is a very, it's a very wet, it's a very broad downstroke. And it's got a nice little crisp side to side. And you know what's nice about this too is that upside down, it writes nicely too. And so it's a little bit, it's a little bit drier upside down. But it's pretty cool because then you could kind of, uh, you know, cr uh, you could kind of vary it up a little bit so that if you were, let's say, doing, uh, taking some notes and you had the main notes were in the one section here. So let's say if I was writing, writing here, notes, and then these would be my main notes. So this would be like about the Leonardo here. And then let's say I were to go into the uh, the side column here, and I could put little uh, marginalia, margin notes here. So you know it's it's kind of cool to just be able to switch it up back and forth. It's very similar to like how let's say a sailor music stub type of nib would be, where you could go nice wet and wild on one end and get that line variation, but also lay down a very solid wet line um, and then you could also flip it up upside down and write with it and still get uh, that line variation but get it more pronounced crisper and also a little bit on the drier side so that you don't have to uh, really worry so much about taking up so much room you could kind of write things a little bit more uh, finer detail than you would with um, the nib as it writes on the other side um, and then a little extra trick that I like doing here too is that people who like writing the architect style you could write if you write with your nib kind of going perpendicularly to how you would normally write with it you could get yourself an architect style so it's kind of cool So overall, I mean, as far as the uh, pen writing and the, the the balance and feel of it, it feels great with the pen posted like this. Uh, like I said, the size being 163.5 millimeters length uh, posted is quite manageable. The weight is manageable with it posted. Definitely does not feel back heavy with the uh, pen posted like this. Um, I mean, you could also write with it unposted. It's not entirely impossible to do that if you prefer cap in hand the the pen barrel does extend out all the way to this is you know i would consider myself having average size hands to about where the you know your knuckle would be on there so it is possible to write with it unposted as well 
And but I would probably say writing with it posted uh, is is pretty much the way to go on this guy. So, and the grip section, um, like I had mentioned earlier, it, it kind of has this little bit of a flare out um, towards where the, the threads are here on the barrel and it kind of steps down. And, you know, I was looking at it, I'm concerned, like, okay, well, maybe the uh, fact that it doesn't flare out towards the where the nib is, maybe then that may be a little bit more slicker and kind of bring my fingers toward the nib, but really because of the fact that it kind of comes out like this, this is like a nice little area for my fingers uh, to gain purchase and to uh, really command the pen around on the page without having to worry about slicking all the way down to the uh, to the nib and the feed over there. And the uh, as far as the nib itself, this is a 14 karat gold nib, uh, which like I said was on the uh, limited edition models. Uh, the nib performance itself, like I said, it, it kind of has a little bit issue of a hard start, which I think will probably end up remedying itself by on its own. I mean, of course, I'm the one who bought this pen, so if I was that unhappy with it, I wouldn't be sharing it with you right now. Um, but I think it'll end up working itself out just nicely. Um, what it also has, too, is a little bit of line variation when you uh, give it a little bit of a press, which, I mean, already the pen has line variation by the fact that it's a stub nib. Um, so that is kind of cool to have that available too, but like, this is a pretty nice wet writing nib that the, uh, that especially paired with the bottle of turquoise Leonardo Officina ink is a good combo and something that I'll probably use, uh, quite often, I would imagine, and, uh, really enjoy this for, for some time to come. So... I appreciate you guys uh, checking this unboxing out. We'll have a more detailed review and do some nib comparisons and writing samples of the steel nibs. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, check that out by subscribing to our Gold Spot Pens channel here on YouTube, uh, where you'll get all sorts of different pen interviews and unboxings and writing samples, nib comparisons, pen reviews, all sorts of different things, quick tips even. We've been doing a lot of those lately. So definitely join us here. And uh, we're excited to bring in Leonardo, excited for this pen. So definitely check it out on goldspot.com if you'd like to grab a piece. Uh, we have them in stock right now. We're planning on expanding on them in the near future. So appreciate you guys tuning in. And stay inky, my friends. Take care.